Just like your father. <sighs> Tony, get up! You're gonna be late for school, you lazy bum!
suppose my mother works at the Beverly Hills Polo Club. Your mother loves waitressing. She's been doing it ever since you've been around. I'm well aware. Julie. Look, oh, Julie. Now, what's that supposed to mean, huh? That I don't take good care of your mom? You know, I haven't heard any complaints from her lately. Evil. Evil propels me, and the reform of evil propels me. I stand indifferent. Well, it's hard to believe these words were written by the same Walt Whitman that talks about the beauty and perfection in a single blade of grass. What did Whitman mean when he said evil propels horror? So, Whitman and Evil. Johnny? Evil? Yeah, Johnny, Evil can evil. <laughs> We're talking about Whitman and Evil. Now, Whitman says that evil propels me. Is he advocating evil? Is that what he's doing? Oh, yeah, he's doing it all right. I understand exactly what he's doing. Well, what exactly is it that you understand, Johnny? It's easy. It's happening here in this town with the Black Roses concerts. Yeah. Like here we got this whole town filled with people who claim to be good, right? Who go to church every Sunday, good God-fearing people. Good, good, good. All this talk about good. And so now here comes the biggest thing to hit Mill Basin ever. And they try to stop it. You call that good? You see, they figure there must be something evil about the band if we all like it. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I think Whitman was talking about. They like evil, and they like getting rid of evil. They're, uh... Hypocrites. Hypocrites, right. Only what they think is evil is evil. You know, they call the shots because they're the adults. Yeah. I think Whitman was talking about Mill Basin. Yeah. yeah. He was a cool guy. Yeah. Well... That's a very interesting monologue, Johnny. But I think you may have missed the point of the poem, perhaps. I think all Whitman's trying to say, uh, maybe in a back-ass words kind of way, <laughs> is that one should remain open-minded. I don't think your parents want to stop the concert just to annoy you. It's just that uh, they're afraid of change. There's never been a rock concert in this town. They probably don't know what to do with one. Well, we know what to do with one. Enjoy ourselves. Have a good time for once. They don't understand what a great honor this is. They didn't have to pick Mill Basin for their first concert. They could have started their tour anywhere in the country. And this is the reception they get. What's well, your mom trying to stop the concert? No committee is going to stop concerts from being okay, played in Mill Basin. Okay, now let's try and remember what Whitman said, huh? Let's keep an open mind. Maybe the parents' committee is right. Oh. Oh. Maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe not. Uh, okay, uh, pages 40 to 52 in your anthologies tomorrow. Yeah, that's right. 12 whole pages. It's tough out there. Well, Julie, aren't you going to class? Give it up. What do you mean? Oh, come on. So I like Julie. So what's the big deal? No big deal. Uh, but I'd say she's taking... She's your own papers now, can all the fuss in the paper. Have you heard anything about these uh, Black Roses concerts, son? A lot of the parents are raising a big stink about it. It's all they talk about down at the shop today. Janie's dad came in for a haircut. He was telling me all about it. Sure, Pop. I just bought myself tickets to the first two shows. Are you sure you should go? Everybody seems to feel it's a bad idea. Janie's dad bought her a ticket. Oh, he did, did he? 
Well, I guess it's all right then. <sighs> right. We're a good people here in Mill Basin. We are a church-going people, and we are a law-abiding people. Our police don't have to carry guns like they do in the big cities. And our children grow up to be fine young citizens we can be proud of, because we have had no corrupting influences here to speak of until now. And now we find that disciples of the devil are invading our town and threatening to steal our children away from us. Yes, yes, their image, their image alone has become a symbol of evil to our young. Their satanic music and subversive lyrics threaten to undermine the very fabric of our society. Would you care to hear some of their propaganda? Yeah. You just listen to this. And you tell me if this isn't the work of the devil himself. Tear down the walls of hell, make room for lust to dwell, Carry in your hands a sword. Tear away the image of the Lord. Oh. Wait just a minute. Wait a minute. That's not all. That is not all. Pull down society. Only then can we be free. In the world alone to roam. Destroy your happy home. Now if that doesn't say it as clearly as now, anything now, else, now, I don't know what to... Folks, just a... Excuse me, Alan. Folks, just a minute. Now, we're talking about music here, not revolution. Now, this group, this uh, Black Rose, I'll be the first to admit, some of their stuff's a little antisocial. But that's the very nature of rock and roll, isn't it? Trying to shake us up a little bit. It's the very nature of poetry, too, isn't it, Mr. Morehouse? Uh, yeah, yes, uh, sometimes it seems so. Yes, sir, Mr. Mayor. See, rock and roll is about rebellion. What about Elvis? Little Richard, Chuck Berry. Remember when they first came out in your parents' squawk? And what about the Beatles? Now, let's don't forget the Beatles. Mark, do you remember when your boy grew his hair long like Ringo Starr? They wanted to run that kid out of town on a rail. Now, was he evil simply because he had long hair? No. Now, are these black roses any different? Yes, they are. Are you going to stop these concerts, Mayor Farnsworth? Now, May, there's not a damn thing that I can do about that. The school board approved the concerts. Is our good mayor trying to tell us that we have to just stand by and watch our children be brainwashed? I can't believe I got you to come out with me tonight. I had to get out of the house tonight. I appreciate the excuse. Thanks. What's bugging you anyway? Is it your creep stepdad again? Or is it Mr. Morehouse? What do you mean? <laughs> Come on, everybody in school knows that you and he are. <laughs> I don't believe this, that's not true. Mr. Morehouse and I happen to be friends. Besides, he's just about the only person in this town that understands me. Don't you know he's seeing Priscilla Farnsworth? <laughs> the Ice Princess? <laughs> oh, man. So you're just gonna moon around after him when you could be going out with me? Donnie, I have too much on my mind to be involved with you or anyone else. Yeah, sure, I understand. I mean, I get down too sometimes. What's it to look forward to after graduation? Working for my father? Cutting friggin' hair for the rest of my life? Johnny. That's why I couldn't believe that Black Roses would play here. I mean, they never played out of the studio before, and they picked Mill Basin to open their tour. It was like a sign that things were getting better around this hole. If they even get to play here. I mean, it's like every time there's something I really want, somebody takes it away. Johnny. But tonight, I want to paint this town red. Johnny, where are you going? 
I said I was gonna paint this town red. That's exactly what I'm gonna do. Johnny! Johnny, get back here! Johnny! Johnny! Would you answer me? What are you doing? You're gonna get in big trouble. I don't want any part of this. Johnny! Johnny! Look. Just stick around, all right? You don't have to help. Just, just stand guard. Johnny, Johnny, look, someone's coming. Forum. Forum. John Pratt. What is Emerson's message in self-reliance? Uh, self-reliance means um, um, just what it says. You can only rely on yourself. I mean, if you let others do things for you, nothing will ever get done. Believe in yourself. Have confidence. Take the bull by the horns. Take the bull yeah. by the horns, huh? Well, you'd know about throwing the bull, wouldn't you? <laughs> what about taking the law into your own hands? The law is all right, but sometimes it's too tough on you. Too tough? In fact, it's real confining, isn't it? I mean, if you want to steal someone's car, it'll, it'll stop you. Deface or pollute the environment, and you'll find yourself up against stiff penalties. Yeah. It's real confining, all right. Mr. Morehouse? Yes, Tina? What's this have to do with Emerson? Well, more than you think, Tina. More than you'd think. Well, okay, have a nice day. Take care, Jeff. Mr. Morehouse, my mother left my father because he was afraid to take a chance on anything. I'm not going to let that happen to me. Julie. What the hell's with you two? Johnny, can I talk to you, please? <sighs> what about? About last night. Ooh. <laughs> about last night. <laughs> Come on. <sighs> What's up? He knows. He just told me he knows. But he's not going to tell. Why not? I don't know why not. He said you were going through a hard time or something. Oh, yeah. That's pretty funny. That's not fair, Johnny. He could have you arrested, you know. Oh, right. And get you in trouble, too. No way. Johnny, what are you doing? Are you coming or what? Wait, I'll come with you.
Looks like this is a place to be. Brats here of all ages. Where's uh, Priscilla? I think she's waiting for the Kingston Trio. I'd like to sing a song about my home. Well, it's not what I expected at all. seen enough. I don't expect any trouble here tonight. But I better take my leave of these parents of paranoia. Ellen, are you satisfied? Well, they are awfully loud, but uh, the children do seem to be enjoying themselves. I don't suppose there's any real harm to them. Well, you know, every generation had their own music. Remember the Lindy Hop? Oh, my ear. Don't embarrass me. <laughs> I need a drink. You want to join me? Yeah. Listen, I don't know about you folks, but I have to get up early in the morning. to open the discussion. Janie?
Johnny, what do you think Emerson's getting at here? Johnny? Julie, what did Emerson mean by the Red Slayer? Emerson? Ralph Waldo Emerson. I guess we've done a lot of talking about literature in this class, but maybe not enough about life. You see, it's not enough to just read Whitman and Emerson from your anthologies. You have to use what you read, apply it to your lives, and make it work for you. Well, how is Whitman going to help me decide what to do for a living? <laughs> no, no, I'm not kidding. Because if he could help, I'd really be happy, because I have no idea. Well, Tony, the aim of literature isn't to tell you what to do with your life to tell you how to live it wisely. Oh, yeah? What Mr. Whitman think of what you've done with your life? <laughs> well, no, that's, that's, that's good. Uh, what would Whitman think of what I've done with my life? Um, well, I guess, I guess he'd judge me by how successful I am at teaching. Uh, very successful right now, but... Uh, hey, you kids can judge that better than I can. I get some sleep tonight, will you, please? <sighs> hey, stranger. How'd you like the Black Roses show? It was wonderful. I'm going again tonight. Really? Did you uh, win the lottery or something? They liked us so much they gave us tickets to all the shows. They gave free tickets to all the kids? It's all their fans, yeah. Hey, what's the matter with you today? Sit down. I gotta tell you, Matt, this is the first time I've had a teacher in here complaining that his kids didn't get upset over a homework assignment. You know, you got me worried. It's not my lesson, Sam. It's my kids. I mean, last week, all they could think about was midterms. Now it's black roses. Uh, you too, I might add. <laughs> You've been exposed to a taste of rebellion. It's only natural they're going to remain temporarily under its spell, but, you know, as soon as these burnt roses leave town, they'll be back to normal in no time, believe me. And if you don't believe me, why don't you go over right now and talk to this Fabian guy? Fabian? Fa yes, yes. <laughs> and once you see that he's just another ordinary working stiff, you're going to see that you've been overreacting. Yeah. Now, would you please make your move? Why did you guys come to Mill Basin anyway? <laughs> Are you kidding? Why did you decide to move to Mill Basin, man? <laughs> Mill Basin's like a, a test case, you know? They figured on starting us out in a small town since we'd never played out of the studio before. Well, once before, actually, but that didn't work out. Anyway, that's why we decided to lay down four shows. We figured we'd work out the kinks from the act. The way I see it, a couple more weeks, we'll be ready to score some big time gigs. Oh, if the parents group doesn't uh, run us out of town. Yeah, you heard about that, huh? Oh, uh, yeah. That's, uh, we expect that. You know, it's kind of the nature of the rock and roll beast. <laughs> Our music gets misunderstood all the time. People thinking it's uh, pretty antisocial, you know? But they're wrong. If people had just listened to our music, they'd see we have a humanistic message for the kids. You know, social and environmental concerns. That kind of stuff. You heard us play? Yeah, well, like I said, I just caught the beginning of it, that's all. Oh, well, and you can see for yourself. I'll bet there'll be no parents protesting tonight. No, nope, no, they've all backed off. <laughs> see? 
They had their preconceived opinions about us, and uh, once they checked it out for themselves, they saw it was all hot air. I guess so. You gotta work out the first set. Hey, yeah, you got me, man. Listen, come to the show tonight, and if uh, you change your mind about rock and roll, I'll put you in touch with my agent. You'd be great. <laughs> I'll see you tonight. Uh, really, I can't. I... Oh, I know. Another date with the mayor's daughter. Guy's got to move up in the world. Where in the hell are you getting this stuff from? Are you kidding? You're a famous guy. I've known your soul a long time, man. Oh, well, anyway, I must be taking a lot of time out of your teaching schedule, like expanding those little minds and all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, you take care. Yeah, see you. Nice meeting you. Julia, aren't you supposed to be in class? I could ask you the same thing. Oh, uh... Hey, Stuna. What? She can help your mother with the dishes. What's this? An ear. This. An earring, Pop. An earring? Only two kinds of men wear earrings. Pirates and faggots. I don't see no ship on our driveway. Hey, a phone call. Turn this music off.
Matt! Nice of you to call first. I'm sorry, Priscilla. I'm here to see your father. Is he in? No. No, he's not here. Did you and Daddy have a date? Come off it, Priscilla. I am not in the mood. I need to talk to someone. Oh, yeah? Well, what about me? You wouldn't be interested. And what makes you think that? Because it's about my students. And when have you ever been the slightest bit interested in my students? I'm always interested in your little students. And their little books, and their little essays. Oh, and especially your little teacher's pet. Leave Julie out of this. Oh, so you knew exactly who I meant. Priscilla, I... <sighs> What's the use? I'm just wasting my time anyway. No, you're wasting my time. Do you know why I went out with you? Because when I met you, I said, there's a guy who's going to do something with his life. But I didn't think it was going to be teaching a bunch of inbred morons the alphabet. You know, sometimes I find myself thinking like you, thinking that maybe I have wasted my life, settled for less. But then I see those little students of mine, and I realize that I have made a difference. Oh, come on, Shut Dad. up, Priscilla. And maybe by your standards, I am a disappointment, but at least I make an attempt. And that's a hell of a lot better than a life that means nothing. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Uh, I came here to see your father, and you got me going off on some tangent defending why I became a teacher. I'm going home. Or maybe to a bar. Yeah. Whichever I pass first. Fine! Do it, Matt! Chris! Yes, Daddy? Who's down there with you? Nobody. Is that you, Johnny? This is the mighty Batman. I never thought you'd be so mighty. Let's see how mighty you really are. <laughs> Why don't you go swim the fire, Aquaman? Jason, you still up? Son, it's 11 o'clock, school night. Your mother would wring my neck if he knew you were still up at this time. What? What are you doing? How could you do this? How, how could you do that to your toys? They were the bad guys. The bad guys? Oh. Come on, son. Off to bed. Go to sleep. Come on. You're going to get me in trouble. Hi. Hey, Mr. Miller. Oh, my girls. Uh, 
How uh, was the concert? It was excellent. Oh, yeah? Where's Mrs. Miller? Oh, Thursday Night Bridge. Oh, That's... she'll be out till about one or two. That's right, Tina. We have Daddy all to ourselves. Oh. <laughs> I thought we could entertain Tina for a while. I'm locked out of my house till my parents get back from this party they went to. Oh, uh, I don't know, Janie. It's a school night Oh, tonight. please, Mr. Miller. I have no place else to go. Come on, Dad. Yeah, well, I, I guess we, we could play gin. Sure, Dad, why not? Yeah. Why should I have all the fun? Hey, okay. Uh, no, Tina, but... See you at school, Tina. I think... Okay. See you later. Tina, we should really call your home. Your parents must be home by now. They won't be home for hours. Oh, sweetheart, it's Are you late. ready to deal? Huh? Let's raise the stakes, then. Tina. We can play strip gin. Uh, strip gin? I'm sure you know the rules. Oh, uh, well, yes, actually, I do. <laughs> okay, you deal, and I'll open. Oh, uh. sleep, son? How was that concert tonight? What's the matter, son? I love you, Dad. So, Mr. M. Oh. What do you have? Oh, Tina. A gin. I guess you win the prize, then. Gosh. Let's play. Tina. Oh, Tina. Oh. Oh. Uh, uh. I hope you're starting to get a feel for what the American transcendentalist writers are all about. Why do we have to study all this?
are these dead writers? I mean, there's a poet alive today who writes rings around him. Damien. I'm tired of living the past. I'm living now. All right. I want you to write an in-class essay, compare the use of metaphor and civil disobedience. I said I want you to write. I got it. Hello. Neil? There's something going on in this town and you gotta help me stop it. You sound like a hysterical Mrs. Miller. Well, if I was Mrs. Miller, I would be hysterical because Mr. Miller is dead. Dead? Herb Miller's dead? I just, uh, just saw him at the town meeting the other night. Bad ticker? No, bad, bad kids, bad music, bad news, Neil. Just don't go off the deep end here. Where in the hell have you been? Tony Ames' mother is dead too. A hit and run accident. Only Neil, I don't think it was an accident. Uh, look, I know that is a lot of bad news for one day in Mill Basin. Uh... Look, Neil, you have to come with me to that concert tonight. Now, I can't explain it. I. I I think they're doing something to the kids, controlling their minds. I, I can feel it, Neil. Matt, do you go to the concert? And if you still feel as strongly about it tomorrow, come on over and we'll do something about it. But I've got to agree with Pris. She just thinks you're carrying this concerned teacher thing a bit too far. It's, it's like it's become an obsession. For Christ's sakes! I know you'll feel better if you and Pris get back together. I know you've had a little spat. This has nothing to do with Priscilla. Drop by tomorrow and I'll help you break the ice with Pris. Okay? Neil! That's a date. Bye. Neil! Sorry to hear about your father, Janie. What did he die of? Heart attack. Mother found him dead in the den this morning, about 3 a.m. When she got home from Bridge Club, she felt terrible. Well, I can imagine. She lost. Now, now, Janie, it's only natural that we try to suppress our grief when a parent dies. But unless we allow that grief process a chance to run its normal course, it can come back in destructive ways later on in life. You're far better off getting everything out in the open now, as painful as that may be. I guess you're right. What do you suggest? What do I suggest? Well, uh, you could, uh, as uh, you let your true feelings, your true feelings, just let them come to the surface. Don't, uh, don't be afraid. Don't, uh, don't try to suppress anything. You know, uh, now, how did your father's death make you feel? Can you describe it? It makes me feel like screaming. I'd like to open a window and scream at the top of my lungs. May I? Uh, yes. Uh, that's, a, that's a very good constructive suggestion, Janie, and it's, a, and it's a good start. Let's let you scream. You know, I think it might do you a lot of good. You know, I often thought of using screaming in my therapy, in my work. Great scream.
I thought I'd find you here. What are you reading? Uh, oh, it's uh, nothing, just an article I'm writing, that's all. I hardly get to see you anymore. <sighs> what are you talking about? I just saw you in class today. Are you feeling okay? I mean, you, you just don't seem to be quite yourself lately. Well, I don't know what you mean. I couldn't be more myself. Um... Uh, You still going to the concert tonight? Of course. With Johnny? Of course not. Johnny means nothing to me. Well, then what's the attraction? I mean, in the concert. I mean, how could you go back night after night and listen to the same old songs, huh? But that's what's so great about it. It's never the same. Every night, I find something different in Damien's music. Something really personal. I don't know, it's like his music was meant just for me. Oh, <laughs> really? Yeah, I, I, I find that hard to believe. I'm disappointed in you, Matthew. You must have read Leaves of Grass a hundred times. And why? Because you always find something new. Yeah. Julie, I, I just don't think it's a good idea. I mean, you've worked very, very hard this term, and now all of a sudden you're neglecting your studies, you're staying out late, and I don't want you to screw up your chances at a scholarship. Now, who cares? I care. I care, Julie. I like you. You're a nice girl. Liking isn't good enough anymore, Matt. I need something more from you. And I know why you pull away from me. It's her. You don't know what you're talking about. There's no one in my life right now but myself. And uh, that's more than I can handle. What? Julie, what? Roses, the flowers of evil. You have been chosen to smite the spoiler with the sword of pain. We are one with things that prey and one with what we kill. Victor and I and thou are one. but have demanded medicine to ease stomach upsets among the hostages. The Dusseldorf High Court has found Abbas Ali Hamadi. Whoa, is that you? Why don't you uh, sit down and watch some TV? It's not much on, but... Uh... Where's my mother? Uh, well, she's out uh, uh, supporting her little family. It used to be even smaller. 
Yeah, well, that was back in the Stone Age. Mmm, you really do know how to take care of your old stepdad, don't you? Yes. I do. Don't stop now. Oh no. Ten o'clock. Missed the concert. Sullivan, I'm sorry. I was looking for... Uh, are, you, are you all right? Uh, I was waiting for the police. Uh, what, what the police? Why? What? What's happened? Well, Mrs. Sullivan, what's wrong? It's my husband. I came home from work and there's dead blood all over the place. I... I well, Where is Julie? Where's Julie, Mrs. Sullivan? I don't know where Julie is. I, I pray to God nothing's happened to her. I'll find her. What a mad little student. Oh, teacher's pet.
Julie? Meh. It's me. Neil, what is it? Something happened. Uh, it's been an accident. Her car caught on fire. She's dead. Her car caught on fire. And, uh, my little girl's dead. Julie. Myself. You know I've always loved you. Julie, you're just a kid. I don't mean that. I'm like a father to you. Julie, no. Now, this, this isn't right. But Matthew. What is wrong with you? I've taken care of everything. There's nothing left to stop us from always being together. Julie, no! Julie, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. What in the hell is going on in here? Oh.
Stay with me, my children. Adorn me, my flowers. My children of evil. Worship your master. The black roses will rise. Stay with me, my children. Yes. My soldiers of evil. Soldiers of death. Stay with me. Worship your master. Flowers will ignite the flame of death. Soldiers of death. No mercy shall be shown. You are my soldiers. Yes. My soldiers of evil. Soldiers of death. Stay with me. Worship your master. Adorn me, my flowers. My children of evil. Worship your master. The black roses will rise. Stay with me, my children. My soldiers of evil, soldiers of death, stay with me, worship your master. Worship your master. Get that man! Good, Matt. Real good. I'll give you that. Best I ever come across. What'd you do with my kids, you son of a bitch? Your kids. You had your chance. Now they're mine. <laughs> what in the hell? Yes. Hell.
With my father! With my father! Jesus Christ, you were right all along. The coroner just told me that Chris was killed before the car ever caught on fire. Been a goddamn fool. Oh, God! Oh, God. Neil, turn that up. They returned to the stage after a six-month hiatus. The big news for the teen crowd tonight, popular heavy metal band Black Roses came to New York today on a five-day concert swing before taking their show to Britain early next week. The popular group has sold out Madison Square Garden for every single night in the first week of August, and a record-breaking half-million fans are expected to attend. The band's controversial lead singer, Damien, told News 87, It's always been my dream to play Madison Square Garden. I knew I could count on New Yorkers for their support. And that concludes tonight's entertainment update. See you tomorrow with... Evil. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.